T that you will make mistakes. And you will correct them on the move. You can't m just, you know, making the whole preparations for, for the ultimate uh, agency without making some mistakes. Even in the evaluation you make mistakes. But you just diminish the size of, of projects that are just uh, submitted without any chances of, of success. And you work on a principle, which is uh, the main principle of, for instance, the agency that I used to work for. It's not the agency, it's part of, integral part of the Ministry of Economy. And this is risk taking. We never supported 100% any project. We, are, we will uh, give 85% to incubators. If you want, I will elaborate on that. And we will give in some cases 30, 40, or up to 50% participation for ordinary uh, proposals, not more than that. So if somebody else is willing and has the money to put on the table for 50, up to 50% of, of the cost, government will assist in another 50%. Mm -hmm. This is the main principle that we adopt or the main policy by the Office of, this, uh, office of the Chief Scientist. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a crucial point about uh, evaluating the, the projects or evaluating those subjects that would be eligible for, uh, for support. Uh, how did you, uh, in the Office of the Chief Scientist, evaluate okay. projects? Did you work together with the okay. private sphere or was it just the officials of the Chief Scientist who were responsible for evaluating the projects? So, first of all, I have to correct you. We don't have any subject that is preferable compared to other, because I think that government doesn't have any, any ability to predict what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. But if we want to push forward some of the subjects, for instance, the bio sector, which uh, has its own characteristics, then we will provide 50% uh, support, regardless of other circumstances which should uh, be allowed only 40 or 30 percent. And what I can elaborate a little bit is about the policy that we are adapting. So first of all, we are working according to a, a law, specific law, which is called the encouragement of industrial R&D. And we have to take uh, considerably it's the importance of industrial R&D. We are not involved in basic research. It is a um, responsibility of, of the government to do that, and it is done quite well, but we are not involved in it. Mm -hmm. Although this is the case, <coughs> industry can use the ability of, of uh, the universities via subcontracting them. Mm -hmm. No problem with that. So first of all, we support only industrial R&D, Secondly, it is not intended for internal use only. I mean, it's uh, written in the sense of the, of the law to improve the balance of payment of Israel, namely export. And it's similar to what is going on here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the local market is too small. You have to support products, processes that can be applied abroad. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are losing the ground. And another issue is uh, having employment within the country. So we will not support any project that will materialize elsewhere, unless there are special circumstances that prevent local production. So we put emphasis on local production because of employment factors, etc., etc. You see the similarity is obvious between Slovakia and Israel in these aspects. Mm -hmm. If you want to decrease the unemployment rate, which is, I don't know, right now, 11%, 10%, and you want to well, decrease it to 5%, this is a basic uh, requirement from your perspective, and you can apply it. If you are not happy with just the Israeli ex uh, uh, ex very popular, etc., etc., and you can learn from mistakes that happened there and happened with us. And I think that the beginning of your your ability to set up an agency uh, which is transparent, 
not corrupt. We said it uh, 25, 30 years ago, because you have the learning curve of our experience and you can just benefit mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Adam, uh, we assessed here in Slovakia that uh, there is enough money, there is enough capital for startup projects that already have a prototype ready, that are in a later stage of, of development. However, uh, we have problems with financing very risky, debt valley faced uh, startup projects with, with business angel money. Uh, I know you are coming from a private equity uh, corporate. However, what are your experiences with uh, business angel investments? And uh, are these uh, investments important in long term perspective for companies uh, such as yours? So. I think we touched on a number of interesting themes here about uh, the, the size of Slovakia, about the uh, limitations of market expansion um, in the open digital marketplace, on about investing in businesses that are looking to uh, sell to the global market, not just the domestic market. And I think you put all those pieces together and you get a, an interesting picture on, um, you know, building a brand Slovakia internationally, not just European, but internationally. So what does that mean? Um, so leveraging the assets of the country um, and, and turning them uh, into, into marketing tools. So whether it's uh, successful startups that you already have, uh, whether it's your um, su successful um, uh, international community of Slovaks that have moved and are working abroad in the US and Canada and the rest of Europe, uh, Asia, and, and turning them into, um, into emissaries, right? Uh, to build relationships with foreign sources of capital. Because um, you, you know, capital is not domestic, right? Uh, there's a global, capital is global. I mean, any of, our, any of our funds, if you look at who's investing in them, it's, they're, they're all global. Our North America fund or our European fund, they're, they're global. The people who own those funds are global. So there's really no such thing as a, you know, a U.S. private equity firm or a European private equity firm because the people actually investing in those funds are global. They're all over the world. So uh, I, I think it's about using, it's, it's building sort of international presence, um, lean and efficient. Not, don't, you don't need to spend a ton of money on it, but you know, um, in Silicon Valley, in, in, in areas where there's a lot of activity of like-minded startup activity, you know, <coughs> get some boots on the ground, uh, or people who are already there, right? You don't need to send a bunch of people there, but people who are already there, use them to leverage, make introductions to, you know, mid-late stage investors um, and, uh, and, and use that. And then secondly, to your point on, you know, uh, I think you mentioned scalability as well, right? How do we get early startups who have something ready to go? How, how do you get that? Which is a, a, a challenge that, that many startups have. So. Um, at least I can speak, because my role is actually kind of an, an operating executive, so I work with companies we invest in to improve their business operations and grow the businesses, right? So um, in, in that respect, if you take that and generalize it, um, there, there's the financing of the early business and get the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the startup leaders off their feet and get the proof of concept proven. Uh, but then there's, there's a wider um, business expertise that needs to be brought to it. If you look at like a, a Google Ventures or something, they have a team of operational experts who can help people with supply chain, with financial controls and processes, with you know, getting financial statements in place and being compliant to health and safety regulations, all these things. Uh, Microsoft the same, right? Uh, you've got uh, uh, support. Uh, for the for these companies that you would invest in, right? Uh, and and we do that ourselves. So we invest in a company. As a country, you can do that too. You can you can have the, that could be a network of experts. So you don't have to hire a staff of people to do this, right? But it's uh, you know matchmaking. I guess at the end of the day, is what I'm saying can be a key function, right? And you know in 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 California, in certain places in the world, there's enough critical mass that no, nobody fostered Silicon Valley. There was no government program to develop it. It just happened, right? Because you got critical mass, because it was sunny all the time, and people liked to be in the sunshine, so they ended up being there. And obviously, having Stanford and some key universities, there's, you, you build off your critical mass. Now, if you don't have critical mass, which I think we're saying maybe we don't yet, then you can foster that with some efficient matchmaking. Uh, the same as uh, relationship matching tools on the internet, right? Yeah. If you don't have critical mass to get a date, then you, you, know, you use an app to find, you know? So I think there's a certain sort of uh, 
uh, fostering those sort of uh, introductions that, that can be done mm -hmm. through the international Slovak. Actually, there was a questionnaire that was, yeah. Uh, can I react? Sure, sure of course. <laughs> um, I think a lot of very, very good points have been made, and I think we really you have to keep it. The experience from other countries, successful countries, shows one, any such policy, because of its macroeconomic dimensions, one, and because it touches on so many things, like even education, so on, it has to be led by, and to keep it simple. I think that is ultimately what it's all about. I mean, that's how, I mean, we have a long experience of uh, support programs, um, you know, we went all the way up to framework programs, seven hour horizon 2020, so the mm -hmm. eighth of these programs, and the simplicity element is the essential feature for, for startups. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that is really something to focus on. Third, I think the issue of scale is really, really important, which is in Central Europe. It's a, it's a bonus. But you, okay, you also have the size of the country and the state of economic development that you have. And so you need to, the scaling up with some of the countries around you, I think. And I, I know you're working on that. So I think that is, is really something, something very important. And then for, I, okay, we've got this scheme to allow member states to learn from the positive and the less positive experience of others. I mean, Slovakia is the first uh, member state to, to have applied for this new scheme, and we're really happy to, to, to soon to be able to offer that. At the level, there are all these instruments, support mechanisms, a lot of money, um, which exists at European level, so you have to find the complementarity with that. I think you're, you're talking about the stages where you to, to get to be successful in getting European funds, because that, of course, offers the, the international platform. And as you said, the world is global. So we're talking here about companies which we have to be able to compete, not just on the Slovak market, not just within that digital single, within this physical single market and the digital single market, i.e. Um, the European Union, but also beyond this global competition. Mm -hmm. Actually, there was a questioner for, for the audience, uh, and they were uh, asked to, to, to vote uh, on the question, what is the role of the government in fostering innovation and motivating for entrepreneurial activities? And actually, the, the answer that has uh, the most votes is just leave the private entities doing their own business with less regulation and involvement in innovation and R&D activities. Tony, you are coming from a regulative uh, or regulation body? Uh, well, not just regulation, <laughs> not just do regulation. Yeah. I think it's very important that that's the interesting thing in the director general in which I work, which is responsible for uh, the digital economy. We both have, um, yes, we have regulatory powers in the spheres where we need to regulate, but only when we need to regulate. We're talking about copyright, when you're talking about the telecoms uh, framework, when you talk now about these practices which I explained earlier on, like geo-blocking, okay, there we, we have to regulate. But it's, it's, it's a, regulating at European level is often also a measure of less national, or a lot of national regulation, i.e. 28 times something by one times, uh, by, by one piece of regulation. Mm -hmm. But we also, I mean, we also support, we have, we manage uh, 1.2 billion per year <laughs> Uh, research program, out of which, um, you know, next year 60, 60 million euros will be dedicated to, particular, to, the, um, to, to, to uh, financing true SMEs in the various development stages, mm -hmm. covering all the stages. So, so it's not just that we regulate. Uh, we, we have a lot of 28 member states, as you know, with the crisis. Um, the economic governance mechanisms in, in Europe have been um, strongly um, have been strengthened and developed, and it's called the European Semester, mm -hmm. whereby um, member states, together with the European Commission, we're talking about now, and the initiatives which you are thinking about, are part of this this, this structural reform agenda. Mm -hmm. So there, the cooperation element is 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 very important. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I interrupted no, no your problem, question. No problem, thank We're you. not just regulating, yeah. yeah. Uh, Radko. Uh, yeah, I, just, I just want to add, from the entrepreneurial perspective, this sounds really nice, right? Mm. Just leave us to, to do whatever. But I can tell you from the experience that there's a lot of smaller comp companies, startups, new ventures, 
in the country which doesn't have, and I heard that also here, like not too many business angel invest, you know, there's no, there's no proper, they take grants from, from the government or from European Union. I think like, at least I'm looking at, uh, in my country, like nine out of the 10 uh, recent successes, let's call them, started with the, I don't know, 40, 50K investment grant from the, from the government. And they also looked into the ways how they can lower the cost of, of the operations. So they went into like three year programs of Microsoft or other companies where they get in government, you know, I mean, nothing, I, it will be really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the role of uh, government, European Union, different other organizations. So if, until we have a proper infrastructure in place in the terms of capital, you know, we should, we should do that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does make sense. Mm -hmm. But then it, that implies also some other things and a huge support mm -hmm. for the community. Okay.